What's up guys, Houndish here, and today you have some pretty awesome news. So we've got update information about the July 17th update, the update which has just dropped today. That is update 1.2.3. We also get further information about Solstice of Heroes and how some of that is going to work. Words about a new vendor which will be part of the summer update. We've got details on bounties, quality of life changes, changes to strikes, destinations, of course the sandbox. We've got plenty of stuff to talk about, and Bungie went ahead and provided a new trailer where we get insights about the summer update solstice of heroes a look at gear and some pretty neat stuff so we'll talk about that as well before we get into the video though this one is brought to you by my sponsor gamerlink so gamerlink have a fantastic lfg and clan app for android and ios and it works pretty much like any other lfg you can use it to find folks to play with complete nightfalls raids or whatever it may be on top of this though you can actually use some of the clan tools to build persistent teams you can use it to keep in touch with your clan mates plan sessions and all of that kind of stuff plus if you sign up using my link below, you will get an awesome houndish badge for your profile on the app. If it sounds interesting, I definitely recommend you check it out. Gamerlink have a ton of awesome features, and the link for that will be down in the description below. So now let's talk about the new update. Firstly, Bungie give us insights about Solstice of Heroes and Moments of Triumph. So they say that Moments of Triumph bounties will become available in-game for the Solstice of Heroes event starting on July 31st, 2018. Players may access a set number of triumphs on Bungie.net prior to the event, and players can complete triumphs to earn points that they can trade for rewards such as emblems, a sparrow and a code to purchase a special t-shirt. When the summer event becomes available on July 31st, players can receive these triumph bounties from the special summer event vendor and will have the entirety of the event to complete them. So there is going to be a new vendor specific to this event. Also triumph bounties are confirmed as well, but they say that triumphs are based on account specific data. Once a triumph has been claimed and redeemed for points, it cannot be claimed for points on another character and all triumphs can be tracked via Bungie.net the highest values of a character on that account will be displayed and in-game rewards will become available on July 31st, 2018. Stay tuned to Bungie for further announcements. But we are going to have an exclusive vendor, which is pretty cool. Now we mentioned the summer event, there will actually be a new summer event engram. So for the duration of Solstice of Heroes, players will earn a bonus Solstice engram with each prototype engram earned through prestige level up. When decrypting Solstice engrams, players will receive new items until they've unlocked all of the items in the box. Once all of the items have been acquired, additional Solstice engrams will reward duplicate items and players may now track what items they've earned from the Solstice Engram through the Engram preview. There is a new item type, so Armor Glows. Players who earn the Solstice of Heroes armor sets may be able to use Armor Glows obtained through Eververse or the Solstice Engram, so these are kind of like the chromas we used to have. Armor Glows illuminate portions of the Solstice of Heroes armor and shine brightest when all of the elements of the Armor Glow and the Guardian subclass align, so that's pretty interesting. Once obtained, Armor Glows may be used to and reused sorry, on Solstice of Heroes armor pieces, regardless of class, and during Solstice of Heroes, players may purchase event exclusive items from Eververse for Bright Dust. So that's some pretty exciting stuff right there. It sounds like they've given us a number of different ways to actually earn these things. We'll have to see what happens, but it definitely sounds positive. There's going to be some interesting stuff there as well. I'm pretty happy that Chroma will be essentially returning for this armor. Let me know what you guys think about that below. But on top of this, we did get an insights video from Bungie where we see some of the gear. They talk about the summer event and Solstice of Heroes, so check this out. July update is filled with a couple of updates. I mean, things that the community has asked for. It's got PvP changes that people have been asking for. It's got the raid layer prestige. Uh, we've got the summer event that we're shipping. Solstice of Heroes is the event that the tower is celebrating. You're going to go into the tower, and from the tower, you'll talk to the event statue, which is this cool, like, chiseled statue. Kind of uh, like Josh Hamrick, chiseled. He's ch as chiseled as Josh Hamrick. <laughs> You'll talk to the statue, and the statue will send you to a special event space of the, the last city. From there, we'll take you into the first of the challenge missions, and that's where you get, kind of get the first taste of the reimagining of that, that campaign mission on a higher difficulty. There's stuff that you didn't expect to make it so players feel like, oh, I, I, I've played this before, and then they get hit right in the face with special new bosses. Yeah, there's definitely some parts in some of these missions where you'll need help. Bring your, bring your friends. Yeah, it's, bring it's, your more, it's always fun when every, all your buddies are dying with you. Moments of triumph are what the players are actually going to be doing um, all the way up until Forsaken. And if you actually complete your moments of triumph, then you may get a special shirt, which you're not wearing today. No, um, I'm not. <laughs> I should have worn mine today I know. with my name <laughs> on there every year. Yeah. 
<laughs> We've got bounties coming back for the first time in D2. Those will be on the Crucible and Vanguard vendors. We've got the 6v6 quick play node that we're adding that's going to be permanent. So Iron Banner in this update, we basically put more theming on it, more Iron Banner motifs. So we replaced the control zone flags with fire pits that ignite when you capture them. Seriously? And yeah. <laughs> Um, that sounds awesome. There's wolves howling when uh -huh. you get a power play. And the big change is when you have a power play, the zones lock for 20 seconds, and so they can't be recaptured. It plays very different. It's, it's a lot of fun. For the sandbox, a bunch of exotic armor updates, and we've got a bunch of new exotic weapon catalysts coming out. I'm very excited about the Karnstein armulets for the Warlock. Magic. Vampire Claw. Yeah, you're going to be magicking and vampiring and fireworks. <laughs> when we looked at how we can evolve Prestige and how we can evolve for the summer for the Prestige layer, we wanted you to feel like each time you go into the raid, it's offering you a different experience. So you're going to have loadouts every week that you're going to be challenged to like use an auto rifle for your primary and a scout for your secondary and a rocket launcher for your uh, power weapon, something like that. The strategy for killing Valka Orr with a shotgun is totally different than the strategy for killing him with Wardcliffe Coil, which is totally different than the strategy for killing him with a sniper rifle. And there are some weeks where people are gonna go in and be like, if you have not done Prestige Raid Layers, do them this week. You will have a great time. Take your friends that have never done this before. And there are other weeks where you're like, oh, this is hard. Like, I don't know how to do this boss with this weapon, right? Like, how, how do we make this work? And we're excited about seeing that week-to-week -week change. One thing we haven't talked about is actually the rewards from the Prestige Raid layers are uh, power level 400 weapons. So you get the power level 400 armor from Solstice of Heroes, and then you can get all the way up to 400 for your character by getting the weapons out of the Raid layers. So if you want to be rocking 400 when you go into Forsaken, you're going to have to go into these Raid layers and find a way to sort of come out on top. Yeah, it's really about trying to find the balance between the things that we just need to address with the game, like things that need to be better, bugs that need to be fixed, and then continuing to give them things that they weren't necessarily expecting. We're trying to give players more things to do, new things to do. Yeah, I think people are really going to like it. One of the biggest things for Solstice of Heroes for me is that as long as you have the base Destiny 2, you don't necessarily have to have the expansions or anything else. Uh, everybody can participate. Now, though, let's talk about the July 17th update itself. So one of the big things, of course, is bounties. They say that five Crucible bounties a day will now be available from Shax. Five Vanguard bounties a day will be available from Zavala. The bounties will rotate on a daily cadence, and bounties can expire after you obtain them. Expiration of individual bounties is shown in the tooltip. And I'll be sure to cover those in-game as well. But, of course, there are a few new exotic catalysts which are going to be available, and this includes Legend of Acrius, Telesto, Sleeper Simulum, which are available through the Prestige Raids, and Leviathan prestige modes. So this is all of the new raid lairs and exotic catalysts from Heroic Strikes have slightly higher drop chances. Skyburner's Oath exotic catalyst from Leviathan raid now has a higher drop chance and the catalyst for Sturm can be now found by defeating enemies on Nessus. There are some miscellaneous quality of life changes, so adjusted escalation protocol weapon reward chances to be more deterministic and players improve their chances each time they defeat a boss, so you should have better reward chances of the stuff that you actually care about. Once all of the Mercury Forge weapons have been obtained, they become available for direct purchase from Brother Vance in the Lighthouse. These will appear on the second vendor page. Momentum has been removed from Heroic Adventures. The Pursuits Inventory Bucket has been moved to the top of the inventory category, so basically Pursuits will be on top of that inventory category. Fixed an issue where unequipable emotes could be selected, an issue where no sound would play on increasing and decreasing the handicap on challenge cards. Commas have been added to large numbers as separators in post-game credit scenes. Fixed an issue which prevented the Season 3 Dead Orbit Gauntlet Ornament from receiving progress from Arc Striders, and armor may now be purchased from Iron Banner and Faction Rally vendors. Changes to Strike Modifiers. So Blackout now increases enemy melee damage significantly, but is no longer a guaranteed one-shot kill. Glass slightly reduced the health and shield penalty, and for Grounded, they significantly reduced incoming damage when you're airborne to account for the odd geometry that Guardians may not have any control over. There are some specific changes to the Mars destination that you can see on screen right here so if any of these have been affecting you then hopefully that will be fixed with this update but now 
let's get on to the exotic armor sandbox changes. So first up, we have the hunter stuff. We've got the lucky raspberry, increased chance to fully recharge your arc bolt grenade and arc bolt grenade hits. So basically it's going to be more effective more often. For the stompies, we've got increased benefits when using strafe jump and triple jump. Younger Hamkara Spine has had the marking functionality removed, but they have improved the tripmine grenade's blast radius and throw speed and made it so your tripmine grenades are harder to destroy. On top of this, solar ability hits will now grant some tripmine grenade energy. But then moving on for the Titan, we have the ACDO Feedbacks Fence. It now grants Fury Conductor stacks on melee hits instead of kills. Fury Conductors now grant stacking melee damage resistance. So when you're using that perk, you will get more damage resistance over time. We've got the Doomfang Pauldrons. Void melee kills will now grant more super energy. And the Shield Throw hits will now extend the duration of the super. So that actually has the potential to last a bit longer now. And then we've got Dune Marchers. Reduce the time to activate linear actuators while you're actually sprinting to 1.5 seconds, which is down from 5 seconds. And they increase the damage of Chain Lightning. And this is by plus 70% in PvP, plus 440% in PvP. For the Warlock Crown of Tempests, they've collapsed the total number of stacks of Conduction Tines to three, so they have the same total effect, but it will only count up to three, and each stack of Conduction Tines will now lower the upkeep cost of Stormtrans. So once again, that will last longer. Then we've got Karnstein Armlets, remove the melee hit effects, so Resilience Mobility target highlighting, but melee kills will now instantly heal you, and then grant continuous healing for eight seconds. And then we have the Starfire Protocol, empowering Rift weapon damage hits now grant Fusion Grenade energy at 20%. So some solid upgrades to a bunch of exotic armor pieces right there. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on them down below. There are a bunch of other exotic armor changes that you can see right here on the screen. Mostly quality of life and bug fixes. But once again, if any of this stuff has been affecting you, then hopefully those issues will now be solved. But for PC, they fixed an issue where high frame rates on PC were causing players, players sorry, to suddenly lose momentum after activating supers. And for exotic weapons, they've increased the number of rounds granted to the Crimson on Respawn, which is interesting. We can see that they fixed issues that allowed empty swords to drop heavy ammo bricks on death in Crucible, an issue where rapid fire frame intrinsic perks on the Basilisk, the dead orbit shotgun, had an issue obviously. The recoil for West of Sunfall 7 and Trials of the Nine hand cannon at Cold Sweat has been solved, and an issue causing the Iron Banner hand cannon, the finite impactor, not to work properly or not to track masterwork statistics properly. Of course, prestige raid lairs are going to be in the game right now, so each week there is a curated weapon suite and a global activity modifier for Spyro Stars and Eater of Worlds, and the weapon set and modifier will be the same across both activities. Of course, Eater of Worlds will become available at 11am PDT on July 17th, so that's today, and then Spyro Stars will be at 10am PDT on July 18th. That's when those raids will go live, but the raid lairs will drop weapons at 400 power, as well as some of those new exotic catalysts. You can actually get a 400 power weapon when you clear the entire prestige raid lair every week, so you do have to complete the full thing, they're not kind of encounter drops as far as I'm aware, but raid armor ornaments will become unlockable for the prestige gear as well. But for hunters, they fixed the issue which prevented hunters from receiving some loot chest rewards in Spire of Stars, that's definitely good. There are some fixes for PC as well that you can see on screen. Of course, a main feature is that Clan Chat now adds a new in-game text chat channel that allows online Destiny 2 clan members to communicate in real time, and this chat channel is separate from the companion clan chat channel. So Iron Banner and Crucible. The Iron Banner game mode now uses Iron Temple fire pits as capture zones instead of the standard control flags. They added a new power play rule to the Iron Banner, so upon capturing a third flag, all three zones will lock for 20 seconds. Pretty interesting. After 20 seconds, all three zones will reset to neutral and must be recaptured. They added new audio for the fire pits and the power play alerts, and they updated the score and time limits to match standard control now that quick play is going to be 6v6. So Iron Banner is going to be a pretty interesting one. They added more support for more Crucible Lab stuff in future, including end of match rewards. But for Crucible Quick Play, they increased the player configuration to 6v6 and updated the playlist description. So of course, 6v6 is now here permanently. They removed Supremacy, updated Clash win score to 100, updated Control win score to 150, Control Zones are initially neutral, and for Competitive, they updated the playlist description, Countdown, Bomb Fuse Timers lowered from 40 seconds to 35 seconds, Rumble is always available now full time, and Supremacy is a rotating 6v6 playlist with its score to win of 150 points. 
There are changes to Crucible ranks as well, so players can now earn Valor ranks from the following playlists, Competitive, Crucible Labs, Iron Banner, and joining a game in progress now protects your Valor win streak for that game. So if you lose, no penalties will be incurred to your Valor win streak. If you win, the Valor win streak increases. Players will now be matched using their glory rank, so that's for competitive. It means that your opponents will have a similar rank to you. The higher you climb, the tougher the opponents get. Glory loss streaks have also been retuned to be less punishing over time. Consecutive losses now decrease the rank points lost instead of increasing them. And streaks still cap out at five. Rank streaks will no longer reset once they hit their cap, and they also fix some other bugs associated with that stuff as well. But guys, that is going to summarize this video. I hope you have found it useful. If you have, a like below is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more Destiny 2 content. Don't forget to check out my sponsor linked below. Gamer Link have an awesome clan and LFG app that you can use to find other players who are like-minded. So that's really neat as well. But I appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Whatever you get up to, have an awesome week. <laughs>